Hey, what's up everybody? Today, we're going to talk about cancer. Ways you can advocate for you or your loved one, alternative treatments, and most importantly, mindset. You're watching Modern Aging, where we chat about innovative and holistic ways to elevate our health and well-being as we age. Be sure to click on that little subscribe button below to be sure to be notified whenever a new episode is uploaded. So today, I'm really delighted to have a guest on. Her name is Denise D. Simone. She's an author, motivational speaker, interfaith minister, cancer wellness coach, focusing on holistic healing practices, and she also is an amazing Italian chef. Uh, she made a documentary recently based on her book called From Stage 4 to Center Stage, chronicling her own cancer journey. So Denise, I welcome you. How are you today? I'm very well. I'm happy to be with you. Now, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I just want to kind of start things off. I want this to not be a sad talk about cancer, but really an uplifting one, because you seem to be all about empowerment. Yes. Um, but if we can start off by just you talking, telling me a little bit about your own cancer journey uh, and what happened. It was 2005, and I had been training for a bicycle ride that is the largest athletic fundraiser in the world, raising millions and millions of dollars for children uh, for the Jimmy Fund and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. I live in Boston. And I wasn't feeling well, and my doctor kept telling me I was fine. Fast forward a few months, and uh, I did the ride, got very sick the day of the ride, rode 90 miles in one day, raised a lot of money, and I was diagnosed with stage 4 throat and neck cancer within a few weeks of that time. And it was a journey that took me into a place that allowed me to go to the depths of my soul to really heal um, from What was your prognosis? It was stage 4 throat and neck cancer. I had a tumor on the back of my tongue where my tonsil had been. And oh I had stage four throat and neck all over. And they told me that the, there was a possibility that um, I would only have 90 days to live. And if 90 I did days? Live, yeah, 90 days. And if I did live, then I could potentially lose my singing voice. And I'm a singer. I play guitar. I sing. I always... I have a song on my lips just ready to pop out and that was probably one of the most devastating parts of this whole thing but lo and behold um i i i could sing and 22 months after diagnosis i sang the national anthem at fenway park in front of 37,000 red sox fans that is amazing yeah wow that's amazing um so can you tell me when so when you were given this diagnosis, um, did you go through chemo? Did you got to kind of go through the traditional forms of treatment? I did not do all traditional forms. I'm a Reiki master, a polarity therapist, a reflexology master, a sound healer. And I did one round of chemo and wanted to do a lot of alternatives, and I knew I needed to do radiation or I wasn't going to make it. I had a very short window to get into treatment because it was so advanced that my doctor just kept telling me I was fine, I was fine, I was fine, and I wasn't fine. So by the time they diagnosed me, I had uh, to move fast. So they brought me in within a few days of, of having the biopsy test and told me that I needed to have a feeding tube. And I was fed through a tube in my stomach for nine months. Wow. Yeah, so I did a lot of radiation. I did all the full boat of radiation, which was 40 treatments. And the last two weeks of radiation, I had to go in twice a day. And it was, um, I, you know, all cancer is is um, devastating and throat cancer is especially tough because it has a lot of lifelong side effects. Like that, what? Um, well, xerostomia, which means you don't have saliva. Um, you know, I had a, 
six months after my diagnosis, I had the entire left side of my neck taken off in a five-hour surgery. That that uh, causes, I, I have numbness from the middle of the ear to the chin, down this whole area. I It's all, they cut thousands of nerves. And sometimes- So you still have numbness? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, you know, you learn to live a new normal. Hmm. We're all living a new normal now. And I, I, you know, I do the best. I do my best with what these side effects are. You know, I had a lot of fibrosis in my jaw. I still do. Eating sandwiches is a thing of the past. <laughs> wow, you, you would never yeah. know it looking at you, my goodness. Well, I really take good care of myself and I believe being happy is important as well. I mean, I, I didn't take a spiritual bypass and say, oh, this is great, I'm just going to be happy. And I'm sure we'll get to a lot of things that I did to to be able to stay alive and be who I am today. But, you know, it's a, it's a lot of process that you have to go through. And I learned from the cancer what I needed to do when I dialogued with it and had a very different experience than a lot of people. That's why I felt it was important to write a book that's inspirational and informational as well as the documentary. So what were you doing that was different, do you think, or that really he helped in your healing process? The first thing I did, Risa, was I decided that I was not going to buy into the collective belief that, A, cancer is a battle. I decided to befriend it and learn from it because cancer has a lot of heat. And when people are diagnosed with cancer, it, there's many emotions they go through. And it's important to allow people to go through those emotions all the while using and conserving their energy for the good of their entire body. With trillions of cells, I knew more of me was healthy. And those, those cells had to be recruited so they could go into the cells that were not so happy and shower them with energy and love and balance and homeostasis. And I decided to name my cancer, which was a pain in my neck, so I called it PIN. And I dialogued with it, and I asked it all kinds of questions, and I would sit quiet. I've been a meditator for 35 years. And I would sit quietly and ask questions. Why are you here? You know, chapter six in my book is entitled PIN, and I documented the entire process to help people. And when I do my cancer work and coaching work, I walk people through that same process, and it's so helpful because people want to push it away. The doctor just cut it out of me, make it go away, and it's not that easy, and I don't believe that's the best way to approach it because curing is the work of the doctors, but healing ourselves from the inside out is really the work of our soul, and to go to the depths of the soul means to do the work and ask the tough questions. Be willing to be honest about this, the, the, the process you need to go through to let go of the old, old um, outmoded traumas that get lodged in our bodies. And the process just worked for me. And, and there's many things that Pin told me, but they gave me, Pin actually gave me three very important messages that then I delved into and the first one was stop beating yourself up for nothing. And when I said, and this was all in automatic writing process. When I said, I'm not beating myself up. And Pin said, it doesn't feel that way in here. How often do we beat ourselves up? Especially when you get a diagnosis of cancer. What did I do? Where did I go wrong? How long am I going to live? What's going to happen? What about my family? What about my pets? What's the treatment going to be like? Oh, I, why did I do this? Why didn't I do that? Why did I eat too many cannoli. I mean, <laughs> it's, you know, and so I really had to look, you know, you are beating yourself up. The second thing was the more light you can hold, the less room there'll be for me. And what does that mean? We don't have a lot of time to get into all these. So I'll just touch on the more light we can hold means to let go of those traumas, to allow the anger and the sadness and the energy. I bought a wiffle ball bat. And when I felt all that, I would bang, 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 and 
beat my pillow or hit my recliner that I've practically lived in forever. And the more I let go of, the more room there was for the light. And the third thing was, which I feel, Risa, is the most important for anything going on in life. The more you love yourself, the less reason I need to stick around. And I thought I was loving myself. And when I really got to look at, am I truly? Like all those thoughts, which I call ants, automatic negative thoughts that come in and steal our good. How many of those were really um, allowing me to stay on this low vibration without the self-love. I feel like the underneath of self-love is forgiveness. And I touch on that a lot in the documentary. And then there is that self-love, the way the divine created us and loved us enough. People think if they love themselves, it means they're, they're you know, egotistical or conceited. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a deep self-respect, self-love. And I believe that that is the all-time greatest healer. And it's not easy, yet I feel like it's the most important thing we can do for ourselves and humanity. No, I think you're so true. That's so accurate. And I think it's really it's really hard to do when you're healthy, I think, you know. Um, maybe when you're, when you're ill, you feel more vulnerable that you can kind of open up that way. Um, in terms of the medical side, I mean... Were there certain things that you had to do to advocate for yourself that you felt that, you know, in terms of your philosophy behind um, healing and that sort of thing, is that something that you would dialogue with your doctor? Interesting question and very good question. I have a naturopath, which I've had for years. And I... What's a naturopath for those who may not know? A naturopath is a doctor that has even more schooling than a regular medical doctor. They are in the sciences of how nature and, and nature can help us heal with uh, body, mind, and spirit. So they may be all in one a, 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 a acupuncturist, a chiropractor, uh, an herbalist. My particular naturopath is very schooled in Ayurveda, which is the study of life from India. So I had my naturopath on my team, as well as my oncologist and my PCP and my radiation oncologist. And it was important for me that they became a unit and communicated with one another. And it was a beautiful experience because I think I allowed my medical doctors to open up to the possibility that all the natural things I wanted to do, like heavy doses of vitamin C intravenously and herbs from Germany that can really help the immune system. I went into a hyperbaric chamber every week. I went, I did some really interesting stuff. There's a whole list of all of what I did on my website. I had um, hours and hours in an infrared sauna. I had Swedish foot baths and Reiki and reflexology. And so I, I blended, I, I had a handshake between East and West. And that helped me feel safe. And there were comments from my doctors, my medical doctors, that they were so grateful to learn things that could help other people within their client base, their patient base. That's so interesting. I, <clears throat> I, I hear about a lot of people trying to integrate, you know, different modality and a different kind, whether it's, um, more holistic medicine with conventional medicine. Um, and it seems like for you, it really, really worked. I mean, you did a lot of self healing. Um, and I, I feel like we're so trained to think from the outside in yes. and just kind of look at symptoms. Um, how do you help people undo that? You know, when we're so trained to like take a pill <laughs> for everything. Um, the way I work with people to do that is when it's outside and we want someone else to heal it, that's given our power away. There's some victim mentality there. And if you're victimized, you lose all your power. And if you can, and it's a process, it's a process because people aren't used to that. 
especially when you layer on the fear of cancer, they just want it to go away. Well, it's not going to just go away. There is an invitation going on. Cancer is an invitation and a way to empower yourself, like I said, curing the work of the doctor, healing us from the inside out, the work of our soul, and in a very gentle, loving, caring way to empower people to know that they can do this and the process doesn't have to be frightening or it doesn't mean don't do what the medical doctors are saying. What it does mean is be a good advocate for yourself, be your own best advocate and trust, trust that you know you know. Yeah, I think that a lot of people um, have lost touch with themselves in a way, you know, their kind of gut intuition, like they'll, they'll hear it and they know something's wrong, just like you knew something was wrong. Um, but, you know, and you waited for the doctor to tell you, but the doctor said that you were fine, which I find crazy. And I think that that happened, that's actually much more common than we'd like to admit. Um, are there yes. things that people should do if they do feel like something is off? I mean, are um, whether it's going to see a naturopathic doctor or whether it's going to, you know, do certain kinds of treatments, are there things that people can do to try to be more in tune with themselves? Well, meditation and quiet time on a daily basis, I feel, is a very important aspect of knowing thyself. Now, I don't mean you have to sit like a yogi for 40 minutes in the lotus position. You can take a walk. You can, without earbuds, listen to music. You can go walk in nature, take your shoes off, and get into that subtle energy frequency that the earth is so generously giving us all the time. And if you do sense and feel, gee, something just isn't right, first of all, Know that you know, and your body can tell you. Your body, mind, spirit is, is, you know, unite them. And then make sure you get to a doctor. No matter how many times in the four months I didn't feel well, calling my doctor, he kept saying, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. And then when I went to see him and he saw the lump on the side of my neck that got bigger and bigger and bigger, he was, he was astounded and apologetic. Don't let that happen. I, I... I wanted him to be right because I didn't have time to be sick. You know, I was working full time. I had a private practice doing healing. I was on the board of trustees at my church. I have a huge Italian family. I I just was like, okay, he's right. I'm fine. No. I knew I wasn't, but I just wanted to keep doing and pushing and do the ride. And I could have died that day. I was that sick. That is so crazy. So what do you feel like you learned through having cancer and recovering and now being in remission for how long? So you've been a long time, 15 years. For someone who had a 90-day, you know, prognosis, it's kind of crazy. 15 years, September. I know. That's amazing. That is amazing. I had just turned 50, and I thought, well, if I die, I've had a good life. But now turning 65, it's like, yeah, I want to hang around longer. I'll, That's I'll awesome. Quit. Every day is a blessing, and every day is, you know, I say I open two gifts, my eyes, when I wake up in the morning. I, um, I believe that it is um, important to be happy in the midst of, not just, oh, I'm happy because it's all going well, or I'm grateful because... You know, I'm I'm healthy. Even in the midst of all of what I went through, I was grateful for all of the lessons because it taught me the best lesson of all, and that is no matter live or die, we don't know the day we're going to die. I don't know the date on the other side of the dash. Then, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live every minute and every day and love myself so it's so much in me that it spills out over everybody else. And I believe more than ever, we need to do this and raise our consciousness with all the COVID and the, and the race and, 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 and all of the upset going on. The world is giving birth to a new world. Whether you have cancer or you are 
uh, in the midst of all of that, because of your color, your beliefs, or your race, or your sexuality, um, be kind, love yourself, and keep a good thought, even when it isn't that hard. Our thoughts can do a lot of damage. I always say to people, think about what you think about. And most of us never think about it. <laughs> well, because we don't want to think about it. <laughs> no, no, but it's, 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 it's you're absolutely 100%. I mean, you know, it's much easier. We've we've conditioned ourselves to avoid and, you know, kind of tuck away the, the feelings and the thoughts that we don't want to have, right? Um, and we don't realize the negative impact that that can have. You know, people ask me, what did you do? How did you do this? And I always, the first time someone asked me that, my answer just flew out of my mouth. And I said, I didn't do anything. I undid a lot. And I believe healing comes in the undoing those traumas, the places, the shadow that we don't want to look at. It's important. It's very important to lovingly take those. You know, when I work with people, it's an emotional journey when they're willing to dig into the childhood traumas and the things they did that they didn't like so much that they're beating themselves up about. Listen, the past is the past. Use it as a way to move into this now moment so you can be healed, whole, and healthy in this now moment, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And it takes work. You know, I've been, I've been a seeker since I was in my early twenties and we're talking 40 years, but I believe that happy people heal faster if they get sick. And so I'm not saying deny yet, get into the place where you can be happier. That's awesome. I mean, it's such a simple message as, difficult as it may be sometimes um yeah but i do think that sometimes when we're at our lowest low it's it's it does reveal a lot about oneself and you know the world around us and the way we look at the world and perspective yeah. and all that kind of stuff so when you work as a cancer wellness coach um what do you actually do with your clients you have actually several pro you have also programs through your website um and um yeah, I, I use some of my life. I created a, a program called Life Living in Full Expression. And it doesn't just target people with cancer, although there's a lot in there that is very applicable to a person dealing with, with cancer. Live Your Life Fully Expressed, it touches um, on every aspect of your life, from doing the things and trying to be a people pleaser to holding on to old um, old patterns to um, what do you want? A lot of people never ask themselves that question and no one else asks them, what do you want? Some people go, I don't know. I say, well, pretend you do. What if you played pretend like we do when we were kids and you pretended you knew what you want? What would you want? And it's amazing how, well, I want this and I want that. Great. So when I work with cancer people, especially, you know, there's a process. It's not like a one and done. It's a process that we go through. First of all, there's a lot of discovery. Who are you? What you doing? What kind of cancer? What's the treatment? Empower yourself, not just to give it away and say, oh, I'll do whatever you tell me. But is this the right treatment? Is you, are you um, fully in? What reservations do you have? And then as we peel away and get out of the more mundane things, I go into the process of how about we dialogue with it? Why do you think it's here? What do you want to know? Why did it come now? What is it here to teach you? Open your heart and mind. Stay out of your head and get into your heart. Um, There's so many aspects to it. And I usually spend about an hour a week with each person and then I'm available by email, or if they really have something going on, um, I'm available pretty much 24-7. Because it's you need someone. And somebody like me, there are cancer coaches out there and wellness coaches. Not a lot of them have lived as long as I have and come through what I've come through. So I have an empathetic ear and heart when I'm working with people. Wow, that's fascinating. I almost feel like that should be a requirement. 
of of people who are diagnosed with cancer yeah. or any sort of you know yeah potentially um, i've thought about that but you know doctors treat and god bless they've not had it and they know what what to do there are wellness coaches out there that um thank god they didn't have it yet they know how to get people to speak but it does add another layer because people tell me things that they won't tell anybody uh, they tell me stuff that they haven't ever told anybody because they can re I can relate because I share things with them that I had to work through and and I had throat cancer there were a lot of things I wasn't I never told anybody that no. I needed to speak about you know and and I'm working with people now who have different kind of cancers but you know, somebody has cancer in the abdomen or the, the, the lower chakras, the lower abdomen and the sexual organs. Well, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happens sometimes to people and their children that they've not talked about. And we need to heal it. Again, live or die. If we're going to die, we're all dying someday. Let go of that so we can slide into home plate in heaven feeling pretty okay. We don't have a lot of work to do up there. We can enjoy. That's so yeah. true. That's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, as we kind of wrap this up, are there is there anything that you want people to really take away, like to really think about if if they've recently been diagnosed or this is something that's been on their mind or, you know, something they've been dealing with for, you know, months? Yes. Um, I think the biggest takeaway is when you get a cancer, if you get a cancer diagnosis, just pause. Typically, we want to rush into things and hurry up, and we don't take time, like I said, to touch in. You know, touch in and find out, what is this about? What do I need? What are my options? And step back, get a team of people. A lot of people start pushing people away when they get sick allow the vulnerability i always said the only ability i had during this was vulnerability don't push it away allow that take a pause and take a breath so you can you know when i'm a i do a lot of artwork you got to step back from the painting you can't put your nose on a glass and see your face in focus you can't see the situation trying to push against it. You need to allow yourself to step back from it and know that, you know, fear will bow its head to faith and let your faith be strong, you know, and be fierce in the fight for what you want instead of being fierce in the fight against what you don't want because that's going to allow you to leave some room, take a breath, then take the steps that are necessary and you'll be the better for it and through the whole thing as much as you can know that you are loved and love yourself as much as you possibly can it will make a difference